Hello, today's video is a video where I wanted to talk a little bit about reading. And, um, and I, I wanted to do it because you always see this bookshelf behind me with all these books. Wait, let's see if I can sort of, anyway, uh, well, whatever. And, um, and so I kind of wanted to address that. You know, they're not just there for decoration. I, I do enjoy reading a lot for those of you who, you know, are friends with me or are, you know, friends with me on Goodreads or something like that. You, you know that I read quite a bit. Uh, I read normal books, I read on Kindle, I read audiobooks, uh, uh, you know, listen to audiobooks, I guess. Um, the whole shebang. I'm always reading at least like three books at a time. And um, anyway, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that. I do think uh, being a translator, it's very important to read and constantly keep, uh, you know, language structure and all that in your mind and keep it fresh. And um, but that's not why I read, quite frankly. I just enjoy reading. I think I'm lucky that I enjoy reading, and so it does help out with what I do, reading both in Italian and English. But um, that's frankly not why I read. So I wanted to actually address a couple things. First of all, when I say reading does help out for uh, translation, I do believe that's the case. However, I see a lot of people saying you need to read to get better at everything, like to do better in business, to do better in this and that and the other. I don't think that's necessarily true and I know it's in fashion now and it wasn't always so when I first graduated from school actually it was the opposite that was back when you know the dot-com thing and people all these uh, entrepreneurs were, were showing off pretty much how they were dyslexic and how they never read and stuff like that and still you know they're like I didn't get an education I didn't read and still look here you know look how successful I am now it's kind of the opposite everyone's saying you should read you should read more look at my bookshelf look how much I read and all that so it goes in phases and I don't know if it's necessarily as important, say for business, as people might say it is. Uh, for example, look, there's no one book or set of books you can read that'll guarantee you'll be successful in business. Let's face it. Even if you do every single thing Warren Buffett did or every th single thing Mark Zuckerberg did, you won't be Warren Buffett or Mark Zuckerberg because they were there at the right place in time. You know, I mean, Warren Buffett even says, you know, so much of his success has to do just with luck. Same with everyone else who's successful. At least 50% of it has to do with luck and where they're in. So no matter what you try to recreate, you can't recreate what they did. And so following step-by-step -step stuff in books, I think can be overrated. Uh, I do think it's very helpful and I still read a lot of business books but it can be overrated. Remember, a lot of people have been successful uh, without reading, and I don't mean just during the dot-com when people thought it was cool. I mean, for thousands of years, reading wasn't universal until relatively very recently. For all these thousands of years, a lot of people were successful, and I'm pretty sure many of them didn't read at all. Um, reading probably was more of an advantage back then, in fact, uh, since many people couldn't read. But, uh, but yeah, many, plenty of people were successful without reading. Also by virtue of the fact that you can't, and this applies especially for entrepreneurs and businesses, in the same way that you can't learn how to drive a car just by reading the instruction manual, you know, you have to actually go out there and do it. And that's the same with business. Like I've met quite a few people who are reading business books and reading many business books and they have a huge collection of business books. There was this one guy and I, I asked like what he's doing, how he's applying it and stuff like that. Oh, phone call, hold that thought. Okay, as I was saying, yeah, so I have this friend who um, has been reading a whole lot of books and he said he's just waiting to you get all the right amount of knowledge before setting up uh, his own business and starting off. And I think that's completely wrong. Uh, you have to, uh, you have to, you can only learn by doing. And for stuff like getting into business, becoming a freelancer, becoming an entrepreneur, stuff like this, you, there's no way, you know, it helps to read the books, but you have to learn by doing. And so every time I read a book, I have to apply it right away. And that kind of brings me into how I, how I read. And um, my reading always has a goal. Obviously, if it's business books, I want to learn something and I'll do that. I'll take a lot of notes, copious notes when I'm uh, reading a business book and then I will apply it, find ways to apply it. So every time I'm taking notes, I'm doing it with reference to my business and seeing how I can apply it. And as soon as I'm done with the book, then I'll start applying it and give myself enough time to see if I can make it work or how, how I need to do it when it's really fresh in my mind right away. Otherwise, forget it. And uh, so that's what I do. And uh, so I always have uh, a purpose. If business books is to learn something, fiction obviously is just for entertainment. And uh, I'm reading a book right now and it's fiction. I usually try to take my time 
I'll do a bit more slowly, not take as many notes, but this is what I read at nighttime before I go to sleep usually, kind of to wind down. I can't read business books then because I don't want, I need to think about something else. And fiction's perfect for that. Otherwise, I have uh, biographies. I read the biographies up, oh, you can't see. Those are the ones up there. Anyway, I read those more for inspiration. I love reading biographies of uh, people who I, I see as successful. And uh, anyway, so every single thing I read has a certain goal to it. And so in that sense, I'm always reading quite actively. And when I read for business, I read for that purpose, for a specific thing, or just trying to see what I can get out of it and apply right away. Um, a couple other things, I, uh, I do take my reading seriously. I spend a huge amount of time researching which books to read usually online i mean almost always online i'm researching uh the various books and uh how they're rated like on goodreads i find different places to buy them i, I love to use books more than anything and luckily they're cheaper than new books usually not always but i just i just really like them i feel like they've been used i don't know in the same sense that when you have a textbook i don't know if it was the same for you guys in school but for us in school when we had textbooks we went into school thinking you should get new textbooks and that's better and used textbooks were always cheaper until we realized wait you, of course you want to use textbooks because they have they already have the important parts highlighted they have notes in the margins already everything like that and you can kind of get extra help with a used textbook and so in that sense they were kind of more valuable even though they were cheaper and i kind of feel the same for used books because i see sometimes they have dedications in front and i see that they've been used i don't know anyway i like them that's just me forget it then, uh, so, but I do spend a, a large amount of time researching which books to read. Uh, an exception to this would be when I go to used bookstores. There I'm kind of just exploring and, and I have found a couple gems here and there, but for the most part, I just do research and find something that tickles my fancy, you know? Um, and what else? Also, when I read, I always try to find correlations. And this is especially interesting to me when I read things of different fields like if i'm reading something from my linguistics field and it ties into something from economics or something along those lines and if i can relate those i really like doing that and that's um that's a big thing that i try to do when uh, reading and i find the more i read the more often i can do that now i hardly read any book where wherein i don't see at least some type of correlation with something else that i've read or something else that i've studied and I, so I find that very useful. And I remember someone once, I think, in fact, it was Warren Buffett, who always talks about compound interest and how compound just interest is one of the greatest things in finance. But the same goes for reading. The more you read, the more you get out of every single extra book you read. And you just get a lot more out of this. By the way, I think this is the same for every single thing in life. Anything, the more you get of it, it's compounds, like experience. The extra experience you get now is worth a lot more than the same amount of experience you would have gotten earlier just because you get to take from all the experience you had before and build on it more. Anyway, I know I'm not making any sense there, but uh, let's bring it back to reading. I do find the more you read, the more each book is valuable because you can relate it to other things you've read before. Another thing that uh, I try to take into account is, uh, well, the Lindy effect is called. I try to read books that have stood the test of time. And if books are still big now after, say, 100 years, 150 years, then, then that means they're classics. That means they're good. And I, so I very rarely read the top 10, top 20 books that you see in the bookstore in the airport at the moment. Uh, there are exceptions, obviously. There are some authors that I'm interested in and uh, some books I just get interested in right away. Nassim Taleb is an example and stuff like that. But uh, otherwise, I rarely read books that are big right now because you find that they're big right now and then they kind of taper off and that was it and no one remembers them in 50, 100 years. Um, but books that are remembered now from 100 years ago or 50 years ago, those are classics and so I'm, I'm more likely to read those than the new ones that are out now and yeah anyway I kind of wanted to show you my books but I'm not sure how to do it here you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put at the end of the video I'll just do a tour with my phone and uh, and give you a tour a little bit show you what I have in my books um, and just to talk about them just because I like talking about them as you can see and uh, but I just wanted to give you a general idea first of all to show you that I do read, those aren't just for show, because you see that on so many videos. Second of all, because I like talking about it. 
Actually, that's probably the first reason. And uh, third of all, because I do think as freelance translators, reading is important. And if you maybe don't like reading that much now, I'd recommend starting. It doesn't have to be about business. It doesn't have to be about linguistics. It doesn't have to be anything like that. Just read something because what it does is it gets you also just used to the language and how it can be expressed in different ways. In fact, fiction is the best in that sense of different ways of expressing language because that's all fiction writers do. It also brings you into different worlds and shows you different points of view. Uh, I read some, somewhere that reading fiction is actually one of the best things to form empathy and understanding of other types of people. So um, anyway, I, uh, I, th that's more or less what I tend to read. Again, I don't read the books, the it books at the moment. I also stay away from political books because uh, I find those aren't evergreen at all. They're just very much in the moment and then they disappear. Um, and uh, these kind of celebrity biographies I stay away from too because kind of for the same reasons. Biographies I read by, you know, I read biographies of people who inspire me. And uh, anyway, I'm rambling now. I'll, uh, I'll, oh, one more thing before I end. Uh, here, just one second if you'll bear with me. There we go. Uh, I hope that isn't too much noise. There's a lot of noise going on outside and hopefully you can hear me anyway. I think you should. So everything I read, not everything, but most things I read, except for fiction, I'd say, I read it using this. And this is how I take notes. I've tried every single thing in terms of taking notes in books. And uh, I've tried uh, writing in the books. I've tried putting a piece of paper where I can write notes so I don't have to write in the book. I've tried just underlining. I've tried underlining and then writing down on the first page where I've underlined or sometimes just keeping notes on the first page. I've tried a bit of everything, including writing on my computer. I had this whole thing where I was gonna take every nonfiction book I read and put it all on a computer so I'd have a compendium of all my knowledge on the computer. That lasted about a book and a half. Um, and because I always need my computer nearby and it's such a pain. Now what I use and what I really like is this. It's called the Fast Book Outliner. And uh, I obviously have no affiliation. I just came across it once. I don't even know who does it. But uh, if you search for it, you'll find it. Uh, see, it's David Sia, David Sha. Anyway, I really like this because what it has, as you can see, is it has the page numbers here and you can circle the page numbers and then write down your notes on the side. Here, let me show you an example of what I do. Just one second. So here we have something for Nassim Taleb, uh, his latest book, Skin in the Game. And, uh, and if you check, I have here. As you can see, I have many, many different notes. And I, I even did some down here on the bottom, but it's very, it makes it very easy to circle whatever page they're on and then uh, write about them. And in fact, more lately, lately, I just have things like where I find good quotes or good this or that, uh, you know, I have different symbols that I use. So that way I can quickly see which page they're on and I can quickly see what I want to find. If I want to go back to the book and see what interested me and, uh, and what caught my eye. So I highly recommend if you do read, find a way to take notes because you're not going to retain. Retention is a big part of reading and at least I have very bad retention. When I read, I tend to forget quite quickly what I've read. And so these notes help me a lot because it makes it very easy for me to find them. And I just keep them there in the book and I can find them anytime I want to look them up. I also tend to write a lot of them on Goodreads online, kind of in the, I write book reviews, but also in the private section, you can write something where other people can't see, but that's if I have time it, because you know, like I said, it takes time to do that stuff. But anyway, that that's it for books. Um, I just kind of wanted to give you an update, talk about all these books you see in the background and uh, talk about how much I enjoy them because there's something that I enjoy. And I hope that you can start enjoying them as well, mainly because if you are freelancers, even if you work anything having to do with writing, then reading books can be very important. And yeah, you know, like I said, they're not needed for freelance and business. I do believe they help. Um, I don't think they're completely indispensable as everyone is saying now, but obviously I, you know, try to get my hands on every good business book I can get as well. So that's about it. If you want to stick around, I'm going to tape the, uh, a quick tour of my books as well. And yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Thanks. Bye. 
Okay, so here, there's the camera, and here's a quick tour of my uh, books. Um, so this, as, uh, as I've mentioned before, actually, uh, I've moved to Charlotte about exactly a year, exactly a, a year and five days ago. I, um, so the, this is pretty much what I've accumulated in a year. And I know it's quite a few books, uh, but they are, well, uh, sorry, some were also from Atlanta. But basically, these are the books uh, I have here. I have another set of books back in Taiwan because we were living there for a while and I kept them there. And I have an older set of books back in storage in Switzerland, which is where I grew up. And we fully moved out, but we still have a storage space there. Uh, so yeah, at some point in time, I should put it all in the same place. But for now, this is, you know, this is what we have. So anyway, these are the books I have. If you see any that seem interesting or that you've read or that you're interested in, by the way, feel free to let me know in the comments. I love talking about all the books I've been reading. And, uh, and so yeah, I'll definitely enjoy it. Anyway, I start here. These are kind of the uh, business books that I have. It kind of morphs into econ books with some science along the way. It's, uh, you know, anyway, I kind of understand how it goes. And uh, so that's this shelf. This shelf until here are what I classify as essays, basically. This includes like Thomas Paine, uh, Common Sense, uh, Democracy, New Federalist Papers, stuff like that. Um, and uh, that goes until here. These ones, I'll get into them in a, uh, later on in a second. These are my languages and linguistics, and so they have to do with that. These are what I consider classics. Um, yeah, from the tale of Genji, Three Men in a Boat, to, uh, you know, Hawthorne, Lewis Carroll, stuff like that. Then we go a bit further down. These are the books I have that are signed by the author, um, and I keep them there separate for some reason. Wait, these two go here. Yeah, every now and then they fall because I don't have any. Wait, there, there you go. So anyway, the, uh, these ones here are the, um, uh, these are books by people that I know, like friends of mine or by me, myself, uh, either one. Then here, these are biographies. These are biographies mostly, well, kind of divided like business and not. Anyway, uh, I really enjoy, as I mentioned, biographies of people who inspire me. So that's what these tend to be. Plus I'm doing kind of the presidents in order. Some of them don't inspire me at all, but what are you gonna do? These are fiction. Uh, and I kind of have them divided up as Canada, Korea, Japan, Italy, you know, fiction from different places. And uh, it kind of spills over also to here. I hope I'm aiming this right, by the way. It spills over to here, uh, right up until here. And then right here, here on, I have uh, memoirs and, um, and autobiographies and stuff like that. And I have uh, religious biographies too. Otherwise, these are memoirs and journals and autobiographies. Um, then down here we have history. These are history, also divided by location, but uh, more or less history. Oh, and then further down there, these are books that are older that might be worth something, but probably aren't. I haven't checked really. Oh, and then way down below is where I have my language books uh, for learning different languages. I think there's mostly Korean and Chinese there. In fact, I took out some Korean books already because I'm gonna start reviewing them since, uh, you know, I uh, will we'll be heading there soon and oh yeah and then this is the section that I skipped before this is actually kind of my favorite section because these are the books I have not read yet and so these are the ones that I still have to get to and so I'm looking forward to that um, yeah that was the, that so that constitutes my bookshelf that's the end of the tour I hope you enjoyed it very much and I'll see you in the next video okay thanks bye